Well, hello. Welcome back, Julius Caesar. Act five, um, very important. Also, very quick. It's not as long as the other acts, so we should get through this uh, quicker than the other ones. It's, we know what's going on at this point. Uh, Brutus has made his possibly his last huge mistake. We could make a list of Brutus's huge mistakes. In fact, we should do that uh, at another time, maybe in school. Um, Think about the last mistake that he just made and why did he make it? Um, he said, remember, Cassius came in and said, um, we have heard that they're marching their way down to this place called Philippi. And then from there, they would come to us here where we are right now. I believe it's Sardis, Greece. Um, and we're up in the highlands. Um, let's wait until they march to us and then we could, you know, have a huge military advantage over them. And Brutus says, nope, we're going to march to them. We're not going to let them pick up any more men and we're going to just go kick their butts. Now, it's a huge military mistake, huge. Um, and Cassie says, no, bad idea. And Brutus says, no, this is the way we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it, we're gonna do it now. Um, in between, they say, okay, Cassie says, okay. He makes that mistake again. He follows Brutus's again, uh, advice again, which is wrong. Why is Brutus making these mistakes? Well, there's a huge reason. Um, he's completely distraught uh, over killing his best friend, Caesar, um, and also over the fact that his wife committed suicide in the last couple of days as well. Remember, Brutus is not sleeping. Brutus is not eating. He's certainly not making good decisions. He's actually seeing things now. The ghost of Caesar came to him in his tent. Nobody else saw it. Um, they were in there. They were all sleeping, yes, but still nobody heard it or saw it or sensed it or felt it in there. Um, he wanted to hear that they did, but they did not. Um, and when he when he heard that, you know, that they did not, he said, let's do it. Get up. Let's go early. Let's go meet them at Philippi and let's get this battle going on. So here we go. We have Brutus and his army with Cassius and his army over on this side. And on this side, we have Anthony and his army. And we have Octavius Caesar. Uh, at, this is Caesar's nephew or who is Caesar's nephew on that side. Now, if you're Anthony and Octavius and you're at Philippi and you're waking up, you have you know, two things are going to happen, right? Either they march to you and that would be like, woohoo, they're here. Let's just battle them out right here on this flat ground. Or, uh-oh, they didn't. We have to march to them and then go up the hill and take our chances. Of course, we know what they're going to find when they wake up. Here we go. Let's pick it up. Act 5, scene 1. Enter Octavius, Anthony, and their army. Octavius, now, Anthony, <laughs> our hopes are answered. You said the enemy would not come down, but keep the hills in upper regions. It proves not so. Their battles are at hand. They mean to warn us at Philippi here, answering before we do demand of them. Octavius is like, ah, I told you they did come down. You said they wouldn't. And the reason why Anthony said they wouldn't is because who would? I mean, what knucklehead general would come, come down off the highlands? And Anthony says, tut. I am in their bosoms, and I know wherefore they do it. They could be content to visit other places and come down with fearful bravery, thinking by this face to fasten in our thoughts that they have courage, but tis not so. And Anthony says, ha, ah, the reason why they did that is because they tried to scare us. And please, psh, I'm Anthony, I'm not scared. So here comes a messenger. And the messenger says, prepare you generals. The enemy comes on in gallant show. Their bloody sign of battle is out and something could be done immediately. Anthony says, Octavius, lead your battle softly on upon the left hand of the even field. All right, here's, um, remember Brutus and Cassius are having arguments left and right. This is Anthony and uh, Octavius's huge argument. Are you ready? Listen for it. Octavius, he says, Octavius, put your army on the left hand of the field. Octavius says, upon the right hand, keep thou the left. He says, I'm going to go on the right. You go on the left. And Anthony says, why are you crossing me in this? Why don't you just do what I say? And Octavius says, I do not cross you, but I will do so. And he's like, all right, all right I'll take the right. You take the left. My bad. And they march. So that's the fight. Anthony's like, really? You're not going to do what I say? And he's like, all right, I'm not not listening, but okay, I'll do it. That's the end of their fight. And they go their, their, the ways that Anthony wants them to, which by the way, in a battle, there should be just one person making the plans, right? Because if two people are making the plans, then you're going to have alternate plans and things aren't going to work out the way. It has to be all synchronized, right? It's very important. So march. And they go do their thing. Drums, da, 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 enter Brutus, Cassius, and their army, including Lucilius, Titinius, and Messala. Brutus says, they stand and would have parley. Cassius, stand fast, Titinius. We must out and talk. Okay. 
A parley is when you speak before or during a battle. The generals go out and they have a conversation and possibly, hopefully in that conversation, you are able to not, you know, to stop the battle or never even have it started. So here we go, guys and gals. This is going to be, you know, some of the ridiculousness that we saw um, in the tent between Brutus and Cassius. Remember the back and forth? I, you said so. I didn't. You said so. I'm better. You're not. I am. You're not. Cassius and Brutus are going to come out and they're going to start the same kind of, I don't know, I guess we'll call it smack talk um, with Octavius and Anthony. Um, I picture, um, you know, a bunch of kids. This is what they're going to sound like. A bunch of, you know, kids sitting there and arguing um, before the fight rather than have a fight when they just talk, you know, I'm going to mess you up. No, you're not. I'm going to mess you up. You know, yes, you can. I mess you up more. No, you can mess me up. It's like, it's it's quite childish. It's interesting because these are generals with their armies right there. So let's hear them have their little argument um, and let's see, do they actually have a battle? I'm interested. Let's find out. Brutus, they stand and would have parley. Cassius, stand fast, Titanius. We must out and talk. Octavius, Mark Anthony, shall we give sign of battle? Anthony, no, Caesar, we will answer on their charge. Make forth, the generals will have some words. Octavius to his officers, stir not until the, the signal. The generals step forward. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. So the four generals come up together and we're going to have a little smack talk session. Let's see how this works out. Brutus, words before blows. Is it so, countrymen? Octavius, not that we love words better as you do. Ooh, Octavius threw a little diss at Brutus. He's like, that's all you like to do is talk, big boy. And Brutus says, good words are better than bad strokes, Octavius. And Brutus is like, well, at least I'm a good talker. You're a bad fighter. <laughs> and Anthony says, in your bad strokes, Brutus, you give good words. Witness the hold you made in Caesar's heart, crying, long live, hail Caesar. And Anthony brings it right back. And he's like, yeah, you had words and you had deeds when you murdered Caesar. And Cassius says, Anthony, the posture of your blows are yet unknown. But for your words, they rob the Hiblabees and leave them honeyless. <laughs> he just said, Anthony, be quiet. Stop talking your smack. Nobody knows how good you are. You know, you're like a bee without honey. And then Anthony says, not stingless too. And he's like, well, I got a stinger. And Brutus says, oh yes, and soundless too. For you have stolen their buzzing, Anthony, and very wisely threat before you sting. And Anthony says, villains, you did not so when your vile daggers hacked one another in the sides of Caesar. You showed your teeth like apes and fawns like hounds and bowed like bondmen kissing Caesar's feet whilst damned Casca like a cur behind struck Caesar on the neck. Oh, you flatters. Darn good point. Anthony called it straight out. He's like, because they just said, Brutus and them just said, you guys just talk and flatter people. You're not real fighters. And Anthony's like, what? You're calling us flatterers? You guys are, you guys got down on your hands and knees before Caesar. And, you know, acted like 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 bondmen like slaves and then you had somebody come up and stab him in the back you want to talk about wimps and cassius says flatterers now brutus thank yourself this tongue hath not offended so today if cassius might have ruled and cassius looks over at brutus he's like man if you had just let me kill this guy he wouldn't be here dissing us right now and octavius says come come the cause. If arguing make us sweat, the proof of it will turn to redder drops. Look, I draw a sword against conspirators. See, here comes Octavius. He's heard the three of them have this little, you know, argument back and forth. I'm tougher. You're not tougher. You have no sting. I have a sting. I b -b 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 -b. That's what they were doing, right? Octavius pulls out his sword. He's like, guys, done. I just pulled my sword. I'm done with this nonsense. He said, when think you that sword goes up again? Never till Caesar's three and 30 wounds. Ah, oh, it was 33 times they stabbed Caesar. Not 23, 33 times. OMG, right? Seven of them, eight of them did it, 33. I'm not a very good math guy, but that's four each man with one extra, right? For good luck, OMG. <sighs> well avenged or till caesar have added slaughter to the sword of traitors look at octavius he pulled out his sword he goes guys i'm not putting this down again until you guys are dead with it and brutus says caesar thou canst not die by traitors hands unless thou bring them them with thee he says and octavius says so i hope i was not born to die on your sword and brutus said oh if that were the noblest of thy strain young man thou couldst not die more honorable <laughs> so octavius joins in in this nonsense octavius says i was never meant to be killed by your sword or you and brutus said you would be lucky to be killed by me <laughs> and cassius says 
A peevish man, worthy of such honor, joined with a masker and a reveler. Old Cassius still. Come away, Anthony, away. Defiance, traitors, hurl we in your teeth. If you dare fight today, come to the field. If not, when you have stomachs. Uh, Octavius couldn't take it anymore, the, the smack talking. <laughs> he was like, dude, Anthony, let's go. And he turns around to the other two generals and goes, if you guys have the courage, I'll see you out there on the field if you can stomach it. Cassius says, why now? Blow wind, swell billow, and swim bark. The storm is up and all is on the hazard. That basically, Cassius is like, damn, looks like we've got a fight. And Brutus says, Ho, Lucilius, hark a word with you. And Lucilius and Masala stand forth. Lucilius says, My lord. Brutus and Lucilius step aside together. Cassius, Masala. What says my general? Cassius, Masala. This is my birthday, as this very day was Cassius born. Interesting. Little side note, we just found out that today, whatever day it is, happens to be the day that Cassius was born. Very interesting. If he dies, then he will actually have been born on his death day or reverse that. He will die on his birthday. It's the same thing either way, right? Um, just an interesting side note. William Shakespeare died on his um, birthday or was born on his death day. It depends on how you look at it. I believe it was April 23rd. Hmm. I'm like 99% sure it's the 23rd. If not, it was the 22nd or the 24th, maybe the 25th, but I think it's 23rd. Let's continue. Um, so he just looked at his buddy, Masala, and he says, this is my birthday. Be thou as my witness that against my will, as Pompey was, am I compelled to set upon one battle all of our liberties. You know that I held Epicurus strong and his opinion. Now I change my mind and partly credit things that do presage. presage. Coming from Sar. All right. Interesting. He goes, dude. Let's talk for a minute. This is a big day. We might not survive it. A couple of things I want to tell you. One, it's my birthday. Hmm. Interesting. Secondly, you know that I held Epicurus strong. Um, I believe Epicurus is uh, part of the Stoics and the, the fact that they, 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 they believe that you don't believe in this supernatural stuff, right? Epicurus is the opposite of supernatural. They believe in reality, right? That not if, the, if, if it's a storm, it's just a storm. It's not the gods telling you something. And he just looked at me and goes, you know, my whole life, I've always held Epicurus strong. You know, I, I didn't believe in these, these, these crazy ideas, these, these supernatural ideas. But let me tell you something. I saw something and it's freaking me out. He says, coming from Sardis on our former enzyme, two mighty eagle fell, eagles fell. And there they perched, gorging and feeding from our soldiers' hands. So, very interesting. He said, yesterday, when we were at... Sardis, the place, the high ground where we should have stayed, right? I saw two mighty eagles and they actually came down. And eagles, by the way, if anybody's ever seen one in wild, they're amazing. Six, eight, 10 feet wingspan. They're majestic. They're awesome. They're also crazy. Now they're like, like the birds of prey. They're like the lions of the bird world, right? Their talons themselves can like rip your face off, take your hand off, that type of thing. Seriously. Oh, I don't know about take your hand off, but to my point, they can hurt you. They actually came down, these warbirds, the best of all the warbirds, and were eating from our soldiers' hands. That's like a crazy good omen. That's some good luck right there, right? Right before our battle, the best warbirds in the world come down, and they're hanging out with us. It's kind of like very rhyme of the ancient mariner type of thing, but you'll learn that when you're a senior if you take my draft of the class, long story short. Um, so good, it was good luck. But today, who to Philippi here consorted us, and they came with us to Philippi. But this morning they are fled away and gone, and in their stead are ravens, crows, and kites. They fly over our heads and downward look on us as we were sickly prey. So yesterday we had eagles hanging out with us. They were like kind of like our pets, our boys. We were feeding with them. We were chilling with them. But today we have ravens, crows, and kites. Guys, that's like vultures. Those are birds of death, not birds of war. Those are the ones that eat dead bodies. And today they're circling over us and they're giving us the, the, the evil eye, man. Uh, also another rhyme of the ancient mariner thing I'm just saying. Um, they're looking at us bad. Their shadows seem a canopy most fatal under which our army lies ready to give up the ghost. And there's so many over us. There's like shadows over us, which make us look like we're kind of dead or that we're going to die. Masala says, believe not so. And Cassius says, I but believe it partly, for I'm fresh of spirit and resolved to meet all perils very constantly. He says, ah, I'm worried, but you know, I'm just saying. And Brutus says, even so, Lucilius. Brutus returns to Cassius. Now, most noble, this is Cassius speaking. He says, now, most noble Brutus, the gods today stand friendly that we may, lovers in peace, lead on our days to age. But since the affairs of men rest still in certain, let's reason with the worst that may befall. If we do lose this battle, then is this the last time we shall speak together? 
What are you then determined to do? He says, if we lose, how are you going to deal with losing Cassius? I mean, Brutus, he's asking Brutus right now. And there's a couple of ways that you can deal with losing as a general. If your armies lose, you can allow yourself to be taken hostage, right? Prisoner. You can fight until the death or you can just give up, which is also taken hostage or prisoner, or they might kill you. But either way, <laughs> it's fight to the death or be a hostage. Let's see what Brutus says. Brutus, even by the rule of that philosophy by which I did blame Cato for the death which he did give himself, I know not how, but I do find it cowardly and vile for fear of what might fall, so to prevent the time of life, arming myself with patience to stay the providence of high powers that govern us below. So he just said, a long story short, I don't believe in suicide. He goes, I don't like that Cato did that. Apparently, there's a guy named Cato who killed himself. He says, I don't think it's cool. He says, I don't think people should kill themselves because they're afraid of what might happen. They should face whatever is going to happen. So I'm not going to do that. And Cassius says, then if we lose this battle, you are contented to be led in triumph through the streets of Rome. I mean, think about that. He's like, so if you lose and you're, you're caught prisoner, you're going to let them lead you through the streets of Rome. Do you know what they did to prisoners in the streets of Rome? I mean, throwing like tomatoes and eggs at them. That, that would be a good thing for them to do it. And by the way, what do they do with prisoners in Rome anyway? Sometimes they throw them to the lions or to like the gladiators. Let's not forget. Brutus says, no, Cassius, no. Think not thou, noble Roman, that ever Brutus will go bound to Rome. He bears too great a mind, but this same day must end the work that the Ides of March begun. And whether we shall meet again, I know not. Therefore, our everlasting farewell take forever and forever farewell, Cassius. If we do meet again, why, we shall smile. If not, why then this parting was well made. All right, so Brutus's decision, clearly, says I won't be led, I won't be caught and kept prisoner, and I won't kill myself. So the only other alternative is to fight to the death. Okay, Cassius says forever and farewell, Brutus. If we do meet again, we will smile indeed. If not, tis true, this parting was well made. And Brutus says, why then lead on? Oh, there a man might know the end of this day's business before it comes. But it sufficeth that the day will end. And then the end is known. Come home, away. And they exit. And Brutus's last words are, oh, man, I wish I would just know what the heck was going to happen today because it's freaking me out. But I'll just go do it. And by the end of the day, I'll know. Either I'll be dead or alive. Either I'll win or I'll lose. Ladies and gentlemen, Finally, battle. All right, the, 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 the smack talking is done. Um, we're going to see some fighting uh, in our next scene, Act 5, Scene 2. Let's see how it goes. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, fantastic job. See you tomorrow. Thanks.